Timing is everything, and I think our timing was a little off for this traverse since it had been bluebird up until about two days ago. But life's busy, and these were the dates we had, so we had to endure. The helicopter dropped the seven of us at 8,000 feet on the Virtue West Ridge. Yes, seven of us. Jay, Aaron, Connor, Chris, Lars, Dave, and myself. And we headed up Virtue Mountain with our bags packed with five days worth of gear and food. We summited Virtue Mountain, worked our way along the ridge in the whiteout. And then the unexpected happened. On his fourth turn in, Jay twists his knee and pops his ACL. Not really a great spot to be rescued from. We side slip the northeast face, thousand feet, 45 to 50 degrees. Work our way through the whiteout and the glacier. Finally get Jay down to the trees where we can be rescued. Jay was super strong as he side slipped down that face in the background and worked his way through all this terrain on one leg. Unhappy with the knee. Three words, side slip down. We're still in the cloud right now, but we do have a suitable landing site here. We're just going to prep it up uh, real nice for you. Jay flown off to safety. We headed down Bain Brook and battled our way through Avi debris, cliffs, and all sorts of random things. Finally, setting up camp. With the first day of this traverse finally over, we all recapture the day. Virtuous. <laughs> Trying. Yeah, Unpredictable. Yeah, engaging. <laughs> Teamwork. I got my transceiver. <laughs> <laughs> We awake on day two, hoping that it'll be smoother than yesterday. It starts off with a couple creek crossings. And then, in Aaron's words, Gullies, dirt, Abbey debris. Check out that avalanche debris in the background. And then from above. The battle continued upwards through steep cliffs and wet, wet snow. As we toured higher, we toured out of the rain, into the snow, into the whiteout. and into our guide's tarp. With the burly day not getting any better, we dig in. And eat Chris's sausage pasta, go to sleep. The next morning, we get a bit excited by some sun. And Lars wakes up sick as a dog. And then we head up, deep into the whiteout. The weather doesn't seem to be getting any better. Well, what can we do but head forward towards Mount Purity? The stormy weather has dropped about 40 centimeters of fresh snow everywhere. <laughs> we decide to camp underneath the rocks up ahead, which makes Lars happy since he's still feeling sick. Getting a little worried about the crux of our trip that is, getting over Mount Purity, up the south, and down the north. A few of us head off to recon, and truly see the potential of tomorrow's mission. We get to the final hurdle on Mount Purity, a 300 foot slope that leads to the summit, and we turn around leaving it for tomorrow morning.
ready to summit purity in the morning. Waking up once again to a whiteout, we wonder about getting over purity. But soon enough, we're out of the clouds. Over small hurdles with big backpacks, we head upwards. Good morning, Lars. How you feeling? Oh, it's fantastic. Best you felt in days? Best I felt in days. Nice. The final summit pitch looms in the background. But it's stable and boot packs easy. And we're on the summit of Mount Purity. Just waiting. Waiting for the weather to clear so we can ski this northwest face. Which we do under epic conditions. Lars leads the charge. Pure powder skiing down Purity's northwest face. Awesome. Holy shit, guys. Well done. Line of the year. We drop all our overnight gear and excitedly head up with light day packs towards Pristine Mountain. The sun finally breaking through, warming us up, but also warming up the snow. Slightly obsessed since we are about to summit a new 10,000 foot peak. I ignore the warning signs. The heat has turned the powder snow into more of a slab. And as I skin above a bergschrund, the slope releases. As everything breaks around me, I know the real concern is the bergschrund. So I keep myself in a good position and let the avalanche flow down with me. Still in skier mode, I wait my time. And as I approach the bergschrund, I jump and leap over it. Knocking the other side and continuing on down the slope and losing one of my skis. The avalanche stops very quickly and I'm left sitting on top with only one ski on. More worried about my lost ski, I immediately get a probe, walk about eight feet from where I was sitting, and on my first probe, I and find my ski. ski was found right away. Happy that only a pole was lost and a little humility gained, we enjoyed some great powder skiing back down to our camp. With the nice weather coming, we know it must be the last night of this trip. Nice Connor, the crotch shot. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing there's a big burly day ahead, we get up quickly, cruise down the river a little bit, and then head up, and up, and up. Setting up for some of these guys' final turns of the year. The turns go from good, to warm, to watch out. And that's it. Virtuous and purified. Four nights, five days, two summits over 10,000 feet, a knee injury, an avalanche, many more epics. Love traverses. <laughs>